Now let's talk a little bit about indirect lighting, which is more important than you might think. Go to the save views, and we're going to go to the interior. Go ahead and pick 1.2 Renderworks Camera Interior will do fine. And see, it'll render us back in OpenGL. Now, we're going to want to create a viewport of this as well. We can put it on that same sheet layer. So we'll go to View, Create Viewport. We'll pick that same sheet layer. We'll still leave it at 72, and it'll default to OpenGL. That's fine. Zoom out a little bit so we can see what we're doing. I'll take this and move this down here. We'll focus on this one. Now, interior renderings, and I'll go ahead and just update this with our current rendering style that we've set up. Interior renderings behave very differently. Go to background rendering, render work style, and pick the My Custom Render Work Style. And then update that viewport while we wait here. Interior rendering work is much more difficult because with an exterior, like we were outside just a moment ago, you have the sun to help you. And generally, having a sunlit scene makes lighting work very easy. You don't have to work very hard with what's called indirect lighting, which is what we're going to get into next. Indirect lighting is light that not only comes from a source, so it'll come from these windows and bounce in. Oh, do you know why it looks this way? Because we forgot to turn textures back on. So we'll go ahead and edit this render work style again. Choose Edit. And we'll turn Colors back on. And while we're at it, we'll go ahead and hit Full Screen Preview. This doesn't actually affect what the end result of the rendering will be. This just changes how it's going to be presented to you. Now, I've been skipping some of these renderings before just to save time, but this time I'll let it go. Before, you saw how it was sort of spiraling out from the middle. Those are called rendering buckets. Full screen preview, we'll do it all at once. And we'll go ahead and hit update. And I'll go ahead and let this run all the way through. Now, as I was saying, interior renderings don't have the benefit of sunlight lighting everything. L exterior scenes are generally very easy to light as you either have moonlight, starlight, or sunlight bouncing immediately off of everything. And there's not a lot of work to be done with shadows and shading. When you get into interior renderings, like we are here, you have to work a lot more on getting light into the scene without just adding a bunch of light objects because that's a little, a little too much. Now, do you see how in the OpenGL rendering, these were shelves? They were very obvious. Here, there's no indirect lighting. So since no light strikes these directly, there's no shadows being made for them, and it's just generally hard to tell. This is a common frustration when you do interior lighting. You'll have a situation like this where it's like, oh, well, my settings work just fine outside. Why don't they work inside? And that's indirect lighting. We'll edit our custom render work style again. And under lighting, we'll enable the lighting options. Now, this checkbox turns on all of these options below. But we're not going to be using ambient lighting. We're just going to be using indirect lighting. And we'll turn this to exterior three bounces. Even though we are in an interior, this will take significantly longer. It will be better, but we want to show the example of the differences. And now environment lighting means it's going to get the lighting from our current background, which will help us light the inside without just using the sun. So we'll go to the background, we'll apply RenderWorks background, and we'll pick HDRI day. So this should just be a nice sunny day outside. Now we go back to quality, and we have two new options to consider. We enabled indirect lighting, and we enabled environment lighting just by checking this box. So back under the quality tab, We'll want to set those a little higher. Just medium's fine for now. Click OK. And again, we want to contrast to compare. So we'll zoom out a bit. Alter Control drag to duplicate the viewport. Line them up next to each other so we can see both. And we'll update the viewport on the right here. There we are. And hey, now we have definition, but we also have a strange sort of smearing thing going on here. That's because we have indirect lighting and environment lighting just set to medium, and we only did a few bounces of it. We only did four, three bounces. So if we turn those up, and now we can do another direct comparison. But notice something else. Look how much brighter this is. Do you see this here? That's because the angle that our directional light was in didn't happen to hit this skylight, but it does happen to come right in from here, and you can see this sort of glow on the edges here. Now, this is lower quality than we'd like, but we have way more definition. We can tell that this is a couch. We can tell that this is a chair. The floor looks 
appropriate. We can actually see some definition between the types of objects. So just turning that indirect lighting option significantly improved this over this. But now we want to get rid of the fact that this is a little bit smeary. So we'll click on the viewport on the left. We'll edit the custom network style again. And we'll turn the indirect lighting to high and the environment lighting as well to high and click OK. And then we'll update this viewport on the left here. There and that's done. Now this isn't as much of an improvement as we would like. That's because just turning the quality up will not solve this problem that we're looking at here. You see far less splotchiness but it's still happening along the corners and anywhere where light is bouncing. It's just because it's not, it's not doing as many what are known as samples. So to solve this issue, we'll go to edit the custom render work style again, choose edit, and the lighting, we don't want to change the quality, we'll leave these at high. In the lighting, we'll change exterior from three bounces to interior eight bounces, which, as it's named, in order to help you, is designed for doing interior renderings where you don't have so much light, so you need more samples, you need more bounces to happen. However, this rendering will probably take about four times as long in the interior light in the indirect lighting phase as the previous rendering took. So we're now going real high for quality, but we're trading our speed dramatically to do so. Click OK. And then update this viewport on the right, which is the more out of date one. Now we're talking. Look how much brighter the scene on the right is than the scene on the left. Not only did it solve the splotchy problem, the smearing, but this is how a real interior lighting would look. There's a reason that we install skylights in buildings. So the scene on the right, while you do need to wait for it, if you want it, the way to properly light an interior scene is generally medium or high for the quality and turning those sam and turning the bounces up to eight. Now, render work styles specifically are designed so that you have more than one of them. So now that we have a render work style that we like for this interior render, which might not be appropriate for applying to an exterior render, we want to save this. So we'll go ahead and just duplicate this render style. So right click on it again and choose duplicate. And we're just going to call it my custom interior render works style. So now we know that one's good for an interior rendering. So we don't need to go and modify those settings anymore. We could use this on any interior view we wanted to do in this document most likely. You could probably take this style and apply it to other documents. Styles are mostly designed so that you can build yourself a nice toolkit of rendering settings. You don't have to remember, oh, okay, I need to turn on anti-aliasing, I need to disable blurriness. You can just save it and use it again. You can import this into other documents, you can save it in your template. A render work style takes up no space. So that's the real benefit of render work styles. They're just a utility option. So just to do a comparison, Let's take this old high quality one that we started with when we were doing the cameras. And let's look at what I actually set for it. See, look at all these quality options turned up all the way. And lighting normal of four bounces. Only four. And I had everything turned on. We didn't need all of this turned on and we didn't need all of this set to high to arrive at this lovely interior rendering. Heck, we practically left half of these set to low. They just were not important enough to change in order to get what we wanted. You don't have to just go through and say, hey, yeah, everything all very high. It's just not necessary. We'll close that out. We won't save that change. This is a nice interior rendering. However, a few last things before we go. If I edit this rendering style again, and I simply turn off the background, so there's no background to it, no environment lighting and click OK. In fact, we'll do it the right way. We'll update the other one so we can compare. However, we need to make sure we change this to the newly duplicated My Custom Interior Render Work style. Then update this left viewport here. There we are. And there's another example of what a huge difference one option can make. All we did was disable the RenderWorks background, which you can see here, it's white outside here and it's a nice sky blue day out there. And we also don't have the light coming from that background to fill our room with light. It sort of looks like a strange storm is coming or an evening on the left hand side. And you can do that if you want to get some strange effects to it, but generally what you'll go for in most architectural renderings especially is generally a nice bright interior rendering. You want to focus on your design. You don't want to occlude it like it's done here.
That'll do it for indirect lighting for now. In the next chapter, we'll talk about artistic RenderWorks modes and how to work with those.